All right, welcome back to Bike Talk episode 12, where I review a race your bike. First up, we got Greg. Hello, Gary. Appreciate your confidence in bikes and chill vibe. Your videos are really valuable. Please view or roast my bike, whichever you find suitable. This is my specialized hard rock from 90s that I bought two years ago. Incomplete and modified it a bit. It's got almost a complete Dior LX group set apart from the crank set and front mech. Yes, I'm running a ghost left shifter. Pretty beat up and my daily ride all year round. Greens from Poland. Greg. Thanks, Greg. All right, so first up, we he asked for a review or roast. Let's see. Let's go side pick. All right, this one. So, yeah, I'd say... Overall, this is kind of like a messenger wannabe style bike. You can see he's got some spoke cards in there. I don't know if he's been to races or if they're just kind of fake spoke cards, but he wants to give the vibe that he's a messenger. Same with the front rack and he's got the strap on there. The strap, however, is a bit tiny for a messenger. So I would get uh, a longer, a longer strap if you want to really uh, rep that look. Overall, pretty cool bike though. I like the pink. I think it was uh, pretty cute. You decided to do these uh, yellow cables. Nice little tie in there. And then it's got the little swap back bars and uh, a stem bag. I could see I could see a messenger running a stem bag and also fenders. So I'll give you a couple of points for that. What are these things? I think these are these valve caps. I think these are they look like eyeball valve caps. You can just see the little veins coming here on the eyes. So yeah, definitely uh, definitely lose a a few points for that and you got this uh xt shark fin here for removing dirt but this bike looks like it hasn't touched a, a lick of off-road also i'd say messengers don't really go off-road they would usually stay in the city but yeah nice uh nice bike thanks greg all right next one is stefan stefan is he just said uh review in his in his subject so yeah this is bike pretty cool i think uh i think this Bright yellow frame with this old Gary Fisher typeface looks pretty cool, kind of like a fish fishbowl style. He's got some Pana races, running, running one by 12, one by 11, maybe even one by 10. He looks like upgraded cranks here with uh, some SE bear traps or MKS bear trap pedals, rocking two different rims. I think your front rack's a little bit slanted forward um, but yeah overall looks like a pretty neat bike looks pretty comfy i like the i like the uh swept back bars and the high stem i think it looks pretty cool looks like a nice little cruiser cool thanks for sending that in stefan all right next one is alexander and he wrote a lot so let's see what he wrote he said hey mate i only discovered your channel fairly recently but I've been loving everything and chill vibes great to see an awesome local bike content too thanks alex here's my bike may as well do a review but roast the f out of it so we'll ju i'll just do a roast uh of this road machine if you see anything already roasting myself right now oh, i might not have to roast him because he's roasting himself uh because when i was taking photos i noticed my hood angle isn't flush with the bars or just when the tape wears out, I suppose. Bought it over a year ago and I've been building it up, commute to Reservoir to CBD. So for those who don't know, Reservoir is like half an hour away from Melbourne City. Don't get me wrong, also do very chill rides around Melbourne the weekend. I'm not a great mechanic, but picked up most second parts I got from Chris at Pedal Cyclery to help me with anything I wasn't in so much about. I definitely roll up to Preston, check out his workshop. Got some sick bikes. Dropped in last, he was building some vintage frame with camping okay cool cannondale synapse to built frame in the usa early 2000s aluminum frame carbon fork ultimately the fork cracked a couple of weeks ago freaking and he got it fixed it looks like i'm sending over some photos of how it's included now in a few modes i run it in pure speed and commuting stuff that is original the frame the wheels 105 okay let's see what it changed uh, the front mech handlebars stem fork cassette saddle uh, he had an old saddle but he switched it back to the original one flat pedals and 28s also added for commuting quick release adapter set so he changed to qr and then a quick rack on the back cheers alex okay let's see what we can roast let's see you got side pick here and another side pick non-drive pick another side pick <laughs> another side pick here are these the same pictures i think alex is probably the type of person that every saturday or every sunday he opens up his newspaper and he just rushes to the section where you can play spot the difference 
I think first of all, we can check out these two pictures and we can see if anything's different. Okay, so I noticed one thing different here and it seems like that his crank arm is horizontal here and it's not horizontal here. And then here, he's also got a lock on the top tube. I'm gonna roast him for having a lock on the top tube because this would be annoying as hell riding with this, sliding back and forth. Anything else? Can you guys see anything else? If you see anything else with these images, you can uh, leave a comment below. I can't see anything else. I think it was just this, the lock and the horizontal crank arm. But yeah, in both, in both picks, his rack is tilting backwards, so yeah, you gotta fix that up, Alex. And looks like his cables are slightly a bit tight on the front end, but I'm pretty sure that's from him uh, swapping the stem to a shorter stem. Most people do that and they don't adjust the cables. Understandable, because it could be a pain. And then one more pick here of the bag, close up of a, a bent cable. Not sure why he sent this. Close up of the adapter, close up of the Cannondale logo fork and when he bought it oh, it was running the old itm stem before all right so i'd say the bike hasn't really changed too much i'm sure the changes that you've done to it alex probably made it ride a bit better but yeah i think uh yeah all in all not too bad looks like a pretty fun bike looks pretty fast looks like you upgraded the wheels or they're light wheels at least so yeah, it looks like it'd be good for commuting. I think out of all the pictures, I think my favorite setup is probably just the one with the panna on the back. It looks the most practical. All right, thanks, Alex. Thanks for sending that in. All right, next one is Eddie. He asked for a review. Hey, Gary, my name's Eddie from Brooklyn, New York. This is my first frame build up. Got bored of my oversized single speed road bike. I tried building up and I wanted something more comfortable. I've been watching your videos and they've been really helpful. Shout out to Omar from All Around Bicycle always help. I'm not sure how I feel about the basket, might switch it out, it's something closer to tire rack, FYI still waiting for a front brake cable hanger. I'm open to roast as well, have at it. Okay, so love your videos. Cheers Eddie. Okay, thanks Eddie. This guy is probably the same as Alex, he just likes taking the same photos, but just repeated. <laughs> not too much difference. All right, let's see what he said. He said, Okay, realized the image quality was low and here's some better ones. All right, first of all, I'm going to roast him for taking a photo but having three different shadows in the background to make it super hard to look at his bike. Most people can shoot a photo and they just have one shadow. But yeah, it really takes a, <laughs> takes a full-on expert to shoot a bike with three shadows in the back. Going to roast him for crank arm, not being straight gonna roast him for different color cables just a single blue one gonna roast him for sending all these photos but his front brake is not even connected <laughs> he was uh, i guess he was kind of in a rush to send his photo in because uh, yeah the bike talk queue is getting quite long this is kind of like when you cook a meal but you put all the ingredients together but you haven't actually chucked it on the pan yet and you just say okay i'm done and then yeah you can see what he was talking about his rack really kind of like shot up here um you can get adjustable struts so maybe that might help you um, but yeah overall not too bad cool bike looks pretty cruisy looks fun like the tire upgrades and uh, and i think once you fix up these uh, long cables hitting your basket it will probably be uh, a bit better all right thanks eddie on to the next one next one is lucas he says please review my bike it is a 2002 scott yakora which i built up myself this brakes one by nine shimano xtr 26 wheels all right so he wants uh just a normal review and yeah overall nice little bike looks like it uh, handles pretty well pretty fun got the shocks up front got some wider tires looks like an off-road beast you got some aggressive ang bar angle aggressive seat angle as well got a frame pump if it gets into trouble pretty cool not much to say on this one looks just like a nice solid bike running two different brake levers here i guess i'm more interested in this this little setup so he's got this kind of old well kind of thing but then he's got uh i think this is his bike stand so you can see he just finished cleaning his chain or something here and then you can hang up his uh his bike there and work on his bike seems like a pretty sick setup nice thanks lucas all right next one is nick review or roast either would be interesting don't have any good photos without mcd's bags sadly 
regards to Nick. All right, this is Nick Spike, and it seems like Nick is a big fan of red with the red bike, red chain ring, and also extreme angles on his front rack. I'm not sure what he's trying to uh, do here. He's trying to use this as a kind of like a big bulldozer for air or something. Not sure what's going on. I think uh, he's got his uh, McDonald's bag pretty safe here. I think if anything, it might slide off into his bars and maybe fall off the side. I think the, I think the real reason for this is because he's got this old rim hydraulic brake with this big kind of brake booster on the front. And then he's got nowhere to kind of bend his, attach his rack here. So he's kind of got to bend a new piece of metal and kind of strain it out a bit or he can attach it to his handlebars. But yeah, that looks pretty uh, looks pretty funny. Getting tight on this chain here. He's got running about one, two, three, maybe his fourth gear. But the chain tension seems pretty tight already. So if he goes up to this 42T, it might be a little bit of a might be a little bit painful for his rear Mac. Got his massive lock here, and yeah, that's basically it. Don't mind McDonald's myself. Good uh, good treat every now and then. Thanks for sending Nick. Nice bike. All right, next one is Stefan. Hi Gary, love the channel and bikes. Thanks Nick. You inspired me to build my bike. Picked it up for 120 euro that then invested another 120 in parts. I ride it on my daily commute and also for fun. Great all-rounder. Guderit RRC60 full deal LX group set. He explains what full deal group set is. So since he asked for roast, I'll correct him. He says both hubs, crank, canty, lever shifters. So you can actually, a full group set would be including headset, seat post, and I'm sure there's a few other things as well. Probably derailers, but uh, he didn't mention that either. All right, road, cruiser, 28s, race face, chain rings, three by, SKS, touring, my guards, lesser rims, new cool Stop pads, plan to put on better rack for touring, dynamo power lights and wider bars. All right, thanks Stefan. So he asked for a roast. So first up, roasting for this blurry pick. Another blurry pick here. Oh wait, not blurry. The light is in focus. But it looks like the light is bent down a little bit. So I think might have an issue with his fender maybe. And another kind of blurry pick here. Not sure what's in focus. Looks like this car in the back is in focus here. All right, looks like he bent up his light back up again, but he didn't uh, fix his focus. He focused right on the wall here. So I think this texture on the wall is actually pretty cool. And then here he's got the back rack. I'm going to give him a point for having the back rack completely horizontal. I think that's a super nice job. Stefan, can't roast you for that. And then see what else we got. Some more close-up pics showing his race face chain rings another close-up pick almost the same pick here and yeah this is his bike all right so i finally worked out why he sent so many close-up pics it's because he was trying to hide this massive stem the whole time this giant giraffe stem um, but yeah finally had to uh come clean and show everyone how it looks but yeah pretty uh, upright position looks pretty comfy and it seems like you're pretty tall as well but from the seat height and the bar height um, but yeah should be uh, should be a pretty fun ride more close-up pics of his uh, Dior group set gonna roast you for this cross cabling here you got this cable going over your gear cable it looks a little it looks a little tight you might want to lengthen that a little bit all right that's basically it thanks Stefan nice one cheers all right next up we got the infamous Oliver aka Red Dread. Uh, he has a retro mountain bike channel too. Check it out if you haven't seen it. It's pretty uh, pretty good, pretty funny. It says, hello mate, as promised, it would be a privilege to get some of my collection onto Bike Talk. Here's my favorite to start with. This is an ultra rare 94 S Works Prestige that has done about 100K on my channel. So he's mentioned 100Ks here. We'll just, uh, we'll just check. Seems this is the case right here. <laughs> Looks like Oliver likes to talk a, a big game. Um, but once you see the list, you might agree that it's a fraud and a disgrace. Yes, it has a full M900 XTR and titanium everywhere. And yes, it's astonishing light at over 10 kilograms. But check this out. So pretty uh, pretty hard flex there on his, on his bike. One, the frame is covered in chips and dents, which I haven't budged to touch up. Two, the Pace RC30 fork has been disgustingly badly painted by me and it's now peeling. 
three the spd is a period correct first gen but on the top of the range m7371 you can see this guy's particular uh, for the xtr shifters are a bit gummy and near service the satin coating on xtr cranks is badly flaking i built i rebuilt the wheels with ultra light alloy nipples which are too light and brittle for a heavyweight rider like me it's too small for me so i look like a circus bear riding it what do you reckon i should do with it chuck it in the skip big love oliver aka red dread so yeah it's funny how he kind of tried to roast himself with uh, all these things already kind of doing a self-roast in kind of way of a, a tactic of uh, kind of saving himself of uh, me probably going a, a little light on him but i'm sure we'll be uh, able to find something this is his uh this is his bike and first thing that stands out to me is this ugly ugly wall <laughs> that he decided to take take uh take a picture of his bike with it looks like he's been painted about 30 times by how thick the coat is um but yeah it just goes to uh goes to show you know oliver's oliver's taste in uh in aesthetics is his bike you can see he did mention it was too small so i can't roast him for the bike being too small but i'm going to roast him for this extreme angle from his saddle to handlebars pretty sure he's going to need a chiropractor every time up he rides with uh, this back breaking position and then he mentioned these uh classic pake forks but he did a diy paint job on it i'm sure he got a lot of comments about that from all the purists I personally think it's uh, pretty cool, but yeah, I think silver silver is nice too. Going to roast him for these bent cables right here. I think they're bent and they're a little bit long too. Going to roast him for not having a bottle in the bottle cage. Going to roast him for this pink cable being too long, this bottom one here. Going to roast him for the ODI logo not being exactly horizontal as well. And then here you can see he's got the OXT shark fin with only one zip tie on the front. Most purists would say this is okay, but I'm going to roast him for not having a zip tie on the back to secure the back as well. I think basically what happened with the forks is he got these pink cables and then he didn't have a reason to put pink cables on his bike. Maybe except for this pink S-Works type here, but I'm pretty sure... He wanted a reason to run pink cable, so he decides to paint his whole fork pink <laughs> just to account for that. And then you can see he's got the ringle or ringlay uh, seat post clamp here, running a black spacer. Looks like a TI stem, but the hanger is silver, so you're going to roast him for match two different ma matching silvers there, mismatching silvers. Okay, so next pick is uh, he's got this super close up of the XTR logo but not really showing the hub too much i think he's trying to hide something for sure all right here it is he's trying to hide all this uh, disgusting dirt that he didn't clean off in his restoration and then this is the next pick another side pick it's too lazy to rotate the camera as well so gonna roast him for that gonna roast him for having two different type of cable ends a black and a silver and then yeah xtr derailleur Johnny actually just mentioned there's another XTR derail. I think there's a 900 and a 910 for all those uh, nerds out there. One has a spring and one doesn't. Unfortunately for Oliver, he thinks he has a full M900 group set, but he actually has a 910 derailer. All right, so I couldn't see whether these uh, the typeface was pink, but it turns out that it was purple. So he could have gotten purple cables and painted his fork purple to match a little bit better, but... I think he just wanted to put pink on there just to satisfy his own needs. And then here, XTR lever, a little bit gummy, he said. And are these uh, are these XTR pads on backwards? I'm not 100% sure, but they do look a little bit backwards to me. Um, I'm sure Red Dread or other other people will, will uh, correct me, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. And then, yeah, he said these are gummy, but yeah, include some uh, free hair on there as well. All right, that's basically it. And this is bike. Overall, this is uh, this bike is a super rare bike, super high class, and yeah, it's a it's a massive flex if you're in the retro slash vintage community. Luckily for Oliver, most of the people that look at his bike is far away, so he doesn't have to uh, do a show a close up too often, so he can get away with it. But um, yeah, he said, uh, "Should I chuck it in a skip?" I think yeah, you should chuck it in my skip. Thanks, Oliver. Thanks for sending. That was fun.
Cheers. All right, next up is Cody, and he says, have at it. I actually thought that was a real hand for a second. So he just wants a review. And yeah, this is overall a pretty cool bike. Seems pretty sick. I like the big basket on the back, almost kind of like a ute style. You don't really, really see a lot of people running a big basket on the back, but I think it would be super handy. He's even kept the wild uh, little attachment plates on there just in case he wants to switch it around again. Nice cruiser vibe there, running two bells, one by nine, some type of arrow wheel on the front and back, juxtaposed to <laughs> this uh, old clunker style frame. And then it's got I don't know, new seat post here and then uh, a rear rack convert to front looks like. So yeah, it just sent this front pick. But yeah, it looks pretty cool. looks pretty fun. looks like you had to have a lot of fun on your bike. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Cody. Thanks for sending that in. Hope things are going well at the bike show. And now for the wife's beta cruiser. I don't normally do uh, two bikes when people send two bikes. So I'll just show you what it looks like. There you go. Thanks, Cody. All right, David. I didn't follow the rules last time, so worth it in the end. Current photos at the top, older pics as it gets. Noco Yindi 3 Small, built from frame up from a neighborhood bike. I recall it being quite nice and slowly being salvaged until one day the lock went missing as well. The frame lay discarded for a few hours before I saw it again and decided to rebuild it. I had a parts bike I bought just for the surly fork and a Trivanti crank set to your Mac. My Nish Nishiki didn't work out for CBBO and left me with a red chain ring and some red parts to get rid of. The rear wheel is 27.5, 2.25, and an angry beaver hub. China eBay wheel needed spokes replaced, so they all DT spokes, nipples, anodized hub, radius, hydraulic disc brakes from Marlin. I bought for 50 bucks from the guy who wanted the frame only. The front wheel is Bontrager 700C 2.1. The fork is Cromoly from a rally and random red boots Amazon same deal needs some work all right here's this bike yeah it looks pretty uh looks pretty sick looks like a pretty fun bike looks like an off-road uh, off-road cruiser which I, I like I also got two different r wheels running mullet style and I'm gonna roast him for his seat pointing straight down feel like it's gonna hurt his knees a little bit I do like the red on this though looks like a, a Frankenstein bike more picks I'm gonna Roast him for his bars being backwards here. They're probably right, but yeah, they look like they're on backwards. And what else we got? Upgraded the pedals. Pedals pretty sick. Looks like a quick release or a unique quick release bolt. Can't really tell. And then a non drive size shot just to uh, reflect his uh, username. Yeah, overall looks pretty good. It looks pretty fun actually. It looks like you get around and uh, yeah, has a like a nice uh, stand over height. So super good for the city i'm not sure did this frame come with a suspension fork i'm not sure the bb looks slightly low but maybe that's how it is for this uh hybrid type of bike there's the bars here it is bleeding bars on the right way just an aggressive position got some type of light here chain looks nice and clean all right got some new spokes here lacing the wheel up some work in progress picks here I think this is the the bike before before we built it up so yeah you can see it was pretty beat up and then just uh, here's a at non-drive side on instagram so yeah here's a i think he just sent the same pics actually he sent them twice nice little selfie pic here so david here is wearing black's wearing black staying incognito wearing a black hat black sunglasses black phone black jacket but um on the bottom half he likes to expand out a bit so he's got got some slate gray shorts for cycling um but yeah pretty incognito you can see the the picture here is pretty blurry he didn't want to show show himself too much but uh, is he wearing flip-flops here i can't tell are these slides <laughs> definitely got uh, a cruisy vibe there and yeah you can see even with the selfie shot it looks like a drive size shot but don't let him uh don't let him fool you it's actually a non-drive size shot because he's shooting it in the mirror so yeah, that's basically it. Thanks for saying, David. Nice bike. <laughs> All right, next up we got Nicholas and greetings from Chile. All right, and just wants a review. Actually, that's a uh, gretting. All right, so this is his GT. Pretty sweet ride. Updated the tires. Looks like it would cut through the grass pretty well and upgrade the drivetrain one by 11. I'm thinking got the stem converter here, riser bars, got the seat back a little bit. Looks pretty solid. He just sent this one pick. But yeah, it looks like a good day for a ride. Pretty sweet. I like the color of the bike. 
Cheers, Nicholas. All right, next one is Gareth. Hi, Gary. My first ever bike build. After getting some inspiration from yourself, to ride Ryan Second Life Bikes. This is my dad's old racer. Bought second hands from the 70s. Sadly left to retire and right under a tree for the last 10 years or so. Thought I'd have a go fixing it up since I couldn't be, it couldn't really be made any worse. No idea what the frame is. Try to use original parts and make it rideable. Learn a lot and would like to do things differently. First time using rust remover and was impressed. Seven speed friction shifting, single speed, rusty cruiser. All the best from Scotland. Gareth Asipia, Asipia underscore Axis sent from Android. All right, so this is uh, this has got to be a before pick. This thing's absolutely hammered. Wow, pretty rusty. Wow, look at that. That's a great transformation there. Nice work, Gareth. Looks amazing. And yeah, here's his freshed up bike. I think came a came a long way. Look at that. Look at that from from trash to treasure. But yeah, nice job. Even got the reflector back on there got a big fender yeah it looks pretty cool it looks pretty fun got a higher rise bars made it more comfy got a little bottle here for some just for a quick sip if he needs a drink and then a saddle bag cool nice one gareth nice work came a long way all right next one is uh raphael raphael hey gary this is my bh super 100 your bike person inspired me to build this bike cool all right here's his bike he just wants a review here's his little side shot looks pretty cool Looks pretty sick. I'm not sure what this tape is, but maybe it's to grip it when he's kind of carrying over stuff. But yeah, upgrade tires. Schwab, uh, Billy Bonkers or something. Yeah, Billy Bonkers right there. Looks like he cleaned it up a bit. Looks pretty comfy. Got the bar ends going on, matching the grip tape or the bar tape here. And yeah, got the light going on, clean headset, V brakes. Nice, mate. Looks pretty cool. Looks like a fresh ride. Thanks, Raphael. All right, next one is Peter. Hey, Gary, I've been. I've been a fan for the channel for, for a while now. Appreciate your way of doing things. Thanks, Peter, for watching all this time. And for a roast, I'm sending you pictures of my dad commuter. It's not a fast, it's not fast, but really joyful to ride. Nothing too crazy in terms of components, but the Thompson stem with the integrated, integrated clamp bolts looks very cool in my humble opinion. All the best to you and other bike people out there. Cheers from Leipzig. Germany, Peter. All right, let's see what's going on here. Let's just Google images again. All right, here's his bike. Yeah, this is uh, this is pretty sick, I think. Pretty nice setup. And he wants a roast. Yeah, I don't know if there's too much to roast on this bike. Looks pretty, looks pretty sick setup. So yeah, looks like he's running one by pretty tidy build. Um, fat tires. His crank arm is straight. He has a nice touch of uh, nice, nice touch of color without going overboard. And if anything, I'm gonna roast him here for this cable resting on his basket, so it doesn't look super smooth. But I think that's just being uh, nitpicky. Nice classic Diamondback. Love me a Diamondback. And yeah, it looks like a super comfy ride. I could say his basket or his uh, his rack is not level. But um, I'll let him get away with it, I think. Maybe what you can do is you can fix up the tie on your cargo net. That would help uh, help tidy it up a bit. Just a quick thing you can do. Um, but yeah, overall pretty sick. I'm into it. Nice little red red colors on the bolts and the pedal end here. Running running uh, a medium, medium narrow wide there. And then here, dynamo up front. Pretty cool. No light. Here, cool little setup. Dino light on the back. He's got a wheeler saddle, so I'm going to roast him for cross-branding there. And then the cargo net with the basket on the front. Thompson stem, custom stem cap. Looks pretty sick overall. And then got some ergon grips, Dior setup. I think this is a, I think this is for a trailer setup, this little adapter thing. I'm not sure, but he might have mentioned it, but I forgot already. Got some red nipples here and a red valve cap. Uh, cool, a little baby seat adapter. I think that's pretty sweet. Looks like it fits well. And it's got the, the frame bag to carry tons of stuff. But yeah, overall, this is bike. This is super sick. This is probably my favorite bike so far. Thanks for sending, Peter. Cheers. Nice bike. Next up is Mike. And Mike says, I picked up this poly meltdown out of a skip. Frame was in good shape. Drivetrain was not. So it's now single speed. Not much to say. It's a great pub bike and it collects takeaway food really well <laughs> he probably eats a lot of takeaway um you toasted second life bikes have been big inspirations to mess with old mountain bikes see what could work thanks mike i'll do my best he said uh roast for a review so i'm first of all i'm just going to roast him for this saggy saddle i yeah i really don't like the style of these saddles 
think this kind of looks kind of stupid. But yeah, if you like it, Mike, then go for it. I'm here running a brake on the back, brake on the front, got the big, big tub on the front as well. This frame's pretty cool. It's a nice color. You don't really see this uh, tight face meltdown type face much anymore. Looks kind of like Voltron ish. Um, but yeah, he only just sent one pic leaning up on the back of a car. I don't know whose car this is. Might be his because uh, he X'd out the license plate. But yeah, overall, it looks like a pretty fun bike. You can see uh, he's maxing out his chain tension on here as well in the dropouts for a longer, longer wheelbase. Looks like some kind of like matrix thing going on here with the rim i'm not sure but uh yeah that's basically it nice one mike thanks for sending that in all right next up is matt and he said roast slash review so first up gonna roast him for this shot what do you want me to do review the bike or review this bike stand i think this bike stand seems pretty solid i'd always uh check these bolts to make sure it's securely on there because um, sometimes what thieves do is they uh they undo these bolts and you might not notice and then they just lift up the whole thing and take your bike. And then here, another shot of a bike rack. I think I might make uh, bike rack shots legal soon. And what's this one here? All right, another shot that's hard to see. We'll just skip it. All right, so this shot I think is uh, pretty close. But yeah, it looks like a pretty f pretty fast bike, I would say. Got the light going on and got, got the chain lock action here. Just running the single single brake on the front with the super long brake cable. If this is a fixed gear, I'm going to roast you for the front brake. You can just take that off. It's unnecessary. I'm going to roast you for your chain being too loose as well. You can actually tension it a little bit and it'll make it feel a bit better. All right. Thanks for sending, Matt. Cheers. All right. Next up is the E Studios. Hey, Gary, I bought this early 90s 820 Thunder 65, including the bike. I know there's a lot to roast so have at it. All right, so you asked for a roast. So yeah, this bike I think is uh, super stretched out. So it's gonna hurt your back. Um, this seat is super slam forward and super long might help a little bit, but I think this uh, your riding position and the wheelbase of this being so long might make it a little bit uh, a little bit funky. You got these crazy crazy cranks going on here. <laughs> Not sure what these are. These look like some type of samurai weapon or something like that got the high rack going on here as well at least it's horizontal pretty horizontal i'll give you that um you got the cable holding on to the hanger here that looks pretty funky i wonder if this is like a diy cable that yeah i'm not sure what's going on there i like how you turned in your 70s vintage levers to match the modern trend of today of aero levers that's pretty funny and then here gonna roast you for rust on the hub but yeah, that's basically it. Looks pretty, uh, looks like a nice day at the at the beach. Thanks, the E-Studio. All right, next up we got Matt May, Mayran. Mayran, here's my build. Here's my Marita build. You can rest if you want. All right, so this is uh, his bike. And looks like got a lot going on. So let, let's just take a look at this. So yeah, it looks pretty cool overall. Not too bad. I think you got some... Your saddle is kind of coming off here, a little bit wrinkly. But yeah, upright bars, tilted forward, a little aggressive uh, stance. Got this uh, stick to match your tires and your, and your saddle and your grips. No bottle in bottle cage, gonna roast that. I'm gonna roast you for your canty hangers being way too high. That's gonna make braking uh, not, that, not that efficient for you. Let's we got another pick, another close up pick here. Um, not much to see. And this is what it looks, used to look like. Oh, I probably can't have that song on there. Sorry, dude. Um, but yeah, overall, nice job. Looks uh, looks way better than it was before. Cheers, mate. Thanks for sending. All right, next one is Hakan. Hey, Gary, would be nice to get your thoughts on my Surly 650B Clapper Cross build. My name is Electric underscore Hakan. Some details of the bike. Surly Steamroller in yellow. Handlebars, generic. Seat and saddle post charge spoon crank set pro wheel wheels halo to stir me out to drum brake electric rehub ultra dynamico tires i have a blue custom track bike and i've done the same electric version you can see my instagram i'm upgrading a few bits to that so we we'll would also love to send one once complete thanks all right so here's his bike or oh, here's his hub internal hub motor all right this is pretty sick 
Yeah, um, I think this looks great. Looks like a super nice choice of color and everything goes well together. I think you are super far out on your dropouts here. You might need to uh, take out a take out a link maybe, but um, you might run out of run out of room to kind of tension your chain. Seems tight on the top, loose on the bottom. Um, but yeah, overall looks pretty cool. Looks like a pretty pretty clean setup. Drum brake on the front, nice and clean here in the front end. Running the fixie bar trend from 90s, 2000s, super tight. But yeah, I didn't know what to expect from the email, but it's actually pretty sick, nice and clean, everything. Super clean build, love the picks. Um, yeah, pretty tight here on the sidewalls. Might need to uh, dish your wheel. Could be the angle though, riding at the beach. I wonder how you got the bike to the beach, but there's no sand on the tires. That seems kind of kind of sus. And then here's the back drive. This looks like a piece of hair. I don't know about that. Extra bolt here for some extra weight. Nice back shot. Looks like a beautiful day. Nice cool stem. Extra bolts here. Valve is straight. Nice. That valve cap's pretty nice too. And then same with the stem cap. Nice. A lot of nice touches on this one. I think it's a pretty nice bike overall. Pretty sick. Thanks for sending uh, Hakan. Nice. All right, that's it. We're going to end on that one. I think this bike's pretty cool. Looks like it would be a fun ride. I'd like to have a burn on this one, see how the electric drive goes. Pretty surprised the lever is so high up here. It might hurt your wrist. You might want to point that down a little bit. But yeah, overall pretty sick. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. And stay tuned for the next one. Peace.